Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone has been enjoying this recent good weather. Um, it has been great uh, these last few, easing, few evenings. I certainly have enjoyed uh, being able to get outside, enjoy these uh, longer evenings now um, with the longer days we're getting. Um, so today we are here for uh, March 4th, York County Community Sector Briefing. Uh, first, I would like to start it off with Laura McDougall from Four Corners Health Department. So welcome, Laura. Morning, Derek and everyone else on the call. Um, we're gonna, I have quite a few updates here today. Uh, so we'll get started. The, um, just first to talk about cases and um, the surveillance side of things. We have, um, we've reached uh, number 4,924 um, in our district at this, by, at this time, in our last seven days, we've um, though been enjoying, and, and in the last weeks, we've been enjoying watching our case numbers um, sort of plateau and, and even decrease um, in, cert, uh, in certain weeks. Uh, in our last seven days, we have seen cases again decrease. Um, so that's very good. A total of 33 cases in our whole district in the past seven days. And in, our, in the last seven days, York County has only had six cases. Um, we are seeing most of the cases in Seward County at this point. They had 22, three in Butler and two in Polk. So we have been enjoying uh, those low numbers and um, that's very, very good news on the surveillance front. So what, uh, what really is, uh, what are we keeping our eye on here at Four Corners at present time? From um, the surveillance standpoint, we are watching the what's going on with these variants. <clears throat> we know that um, as of yesterday in the state, we in our uh, communications, we have heard that there is one. Um, there was one case of the B117 <coughs> variant. That's the the variant out of the out of the UK. Uh, that was discovered in Nebraska. And we have 13 variants from California called B1429, I believe. And these variants, of course, are uh, kind of, they, they're numbering them now and there's, there's more and more popping up. So, but we have um, 13 of the California variant that have been found in Nebraska. We know that these are in health districts around us. We have not um, seen any variants in our health district yet, but um, we do know they are around us. These, um, and why are these concerning? Well, these lineage, lineages are outcompeting preceding lineages. So that means that, um, that we also think and that's because we think that these, uh, these variants are more transmissible. They have increased transmissibility in our communities, uh, which uh, another way to put that is that they're, they're more contagious. Their contagiousness has increased because of the, some of the mutations that are in these strains. So um, I think that you know, it's really important we watch what's going on with these. We are, um, we believe though that, um, you know, our, we have some things that we can do and um, we, we really think they're, they're studying, you know, how the vaccine acts on these lineages. What does this mean for our immunity? And I think that's all things that we're still going to learn, but it's important to really keep up with our non-pharmaceutical interventions because these variants do have some characteristics that could increase spread and cause another wave. Um, so we want to keep up our non-pharmaceutical interventions. That's our social distancing, our masking and things for now. Um, we want to encourage people to get a test if uh, for COVID if they've been exposed or they have symptoms of COVID. And it, when a vaccine is offered to you, please get it. Um, that's going to be important to get increase the vaccine um, vaccination rates in our communities and get our immunity, um, get more immunity into the, into the community. So those are some of the important things that we can do right now. Um, so let's talk for a minute about vaccine. <clears throat> we, this really has been what we've been concentrating 
most of our efforts on right now is just getting vaccines in people. And as of the start of business today, uh, we had um, what we can see is we have um, 6,743 first doses have been administered, 3,339 second doses for a total of 10,082 uh, vaccines have been given so far in our district. Nine, so of our population who is 18 plus, we have 19.9% of that population has received at least one dose. So that's almost 20% of our 18 plus population have received at least one dose. And we have 9.85% of our 18 plus population have been fully vaccinated. So um, we are making progress in our, in York County, as of this morning, we have uh, we can see that 3,414 vaccines have been given. So that is our, those are our numbers right now that we're looking at. We know that there could be some more, um, of course, there is some lag at times getting all of the vaccines into the data system. So numbers are constantly changing and increasing. So um, today we're having clinics, we're having a big, big clinic in York County. Um, at the Holtus Convention Center, and we think there'll be close to close to 500 um, people who get a vaccine today there. So that's a that's a big clinic going on in York County. Um, we're also having uh, clinics today in uh, Butler County. We have um, we're our my team is going to do a school in Seward County. Uh, last night, Polk County had a big uh, vaccine clinic at the fairgrounds, and I think uh, Memorial Healthcare Systems in Seward also had a big one at the fairgrounds yesterday. So um, things are are perking along. We do have um, our sites right now, our mass vaccination sites. Um, as you we've talked about before, we've been working from the oldest uh, population towards the 65 age group. We're currently we're we're vaccinating people in the low 70s um, age group, and sometimes there's even a 60s person, upper 60s popping in there. So we're kind of, um, for most of us, we're working kind of around that um, low 70s. Uh, that's where we're at in terms of ages. Um, Four Corners has been starting on working on teachers and educators, school staff. Um, we have gotten, um, about 10 schools um, uh, scheduled. So we're going to be doing some couple uh, this week and then some next week. We did get uh, a small amount, about 300 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And those have been scheduled into, have already been scheduled to take care of um, mostly school people. And uh, we'll be taking those on the road and to the schools and doing vaccinations for school people. We also know that there's some supplies of vaccine available at Walmart right now, and I think they're doing their own scheduling at this point. Um, so that, that's another outlet for vaccine. They're also vaccinating in the, in the phase 1B category. So I would be happy to answer any questions, and I know that um, uh, the, our healthcare sector will have a little more specific information about what's been going on in York County. But uh, I'll turn it back to you, Derek. Thank you, Laura, for that update this morning. Next, we'll move on to our healthcare sector update. Um, Jim, Ulrich, um, we'll move it over to you. Thanks, Derek, and good morning, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> touch on a few uh, things across our campuses and a little bit on, uh, tag on a little bit with Laura as well. Uh, I usually start by talking a little bit about what statewide hospitalizations have done over this last week. And uh, I think kind of settling into more of a, uh, more of a steady pattern a little bit. We've, uh, uh, as of the 2nd of, uh, um, of March, statewide hospitalizations were at 150 across the state for COVID-19 patients, they 
probably any 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 minute now they'll be updating that further uh, at the state for the third. Interesting to see how that continues to change from day to day. But last week it was 160. Um, so really, again, not changing too much, but at least it's not uh, going up on that end. And uh, but since the peak back on the 20th of November, which was 987. The number's kind of crazy to say, but it's nearly 85% decrease in hospitalizations. And so, um, uh, so that's really good to see, like I said, you know, keeping, uh, you know, any kind of change in direct health mandates at the state are probably going to be governed more about the hospitalization level of 80, you know, so dropping quite a bit more from where we are today to see any uh, further statewide lowering of the directed health mandates uh, as a uh, the governor's been going off of hospitalizations uh, primarily for that, uh, making that decision. So our testing volumes have, as they have been across the district, health district almost uniformly have gone down. And we only had 20 individuals we tested last week, whether they were inpatients through our ED or outpatient uh, tests as well. And only had a couple of positive results. As Laura said, we haven't had many positives in, in York County uh, overall. Uh, this past week, and we tested uh, the week before just like 22, you know, we had a positive result there too. Uh, as of Tuesday afternoon, and I apologize, I don't have the actual result on Test Nebraska, but I know that we were, we were scheduled for 13. Uh, I wasn't able to get an update because as Laura alluded to, we got a busy clinic today going on. Uh, so our Test Nebraska numbers are quite a bit uh, down as they are across the health district as well. As of this morning, we have no COVID patients in, in house. Uh, we had one a couple days ago and only was here for a day or so and discharged home. So that was good to see. So really through our ER, we've, uh, that was about all the, we only saw a couple COVID patients through our ER and one was transferred on over this last week and one was admitted that I just talked about. And then, uh, and then ultimately discharged to home once they reached the patient floor for a few days. And only one of the uh, monoclonal antibodies given, uh, what I call the BAM drug for short. And uh, so the, our volumes have been down on that as well. These are all positive things, obviously, that we're seeing. And, and I think it's positive to, that the COVID patients we did, have, we did have wasn't a serious one on that end, wasn't real, uh, you know, wasn't real compromised and wasn't super sick, which was good to see as well. Uh, as Laura alluded to, big clinic day to day, second week, we're out at the Holta Center. Things went well last week. I anticipate things will go well today, albeit busy. Thanks so much for uh, the Chamber uh, orchestrating the efforts for volunteers and volunteers, uh, you know, throughout our community that are coming to help uh, along with our, our great team that's out there. Um, like Laura said, it, it could go north of 450 that we're out there. It could it could be between 450 and 500, as she alluded to. And I know that we were planning on uh, a couple of days ago, 250 first doses, 200 second doses, but those tend to vary just a little bit on if we can go a little higher. So um, last Thursday, in comparison, there were 371 total individuals that were vaccinated through the, our York General Clinic at the Holta Center, 230 first dose, 121 second dose. So those are some of the numbers there. And I want to tell you just about some great things at the Hearthstone of Willowbrook. At, at the Hearthstone, uh, uh, visitations between families and residents continue to go well. And staff member, uh, there we, we did have one staff member that recently tested positive there, but had not had any exposure to residents. So we're able to continue on our, on our visits uh, uh, in the great room at the Hearthstone. And so, uh, so the Willowbrook things also continue to go well with family and resident indoor visitations and actually in the, in the residence room with the, the, the masking and other precautions taken. Uh, they're able to do that because of their, their percentages of residents and staff members that were fully vaccinated uh, through the state, they're able to do that. And that was just huge difference that's made in both of those campuses and uh, uh, on that end. So, we only have one employee, the one I alluded to, that's uh, out for COVID-related reasons. Uh, prior to that happening, we were on a 10-day streak without anybody out for uh, COVID-related reasons. And out of our 480 to 490 employees that we have, this is really good to see. 
On a non-COVID front, I did want to talk just a, just a second, a minute, our York General Medical Plaza, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, which will have that uh, quick care clinic along with Quest Diagnostic Labs out of the interstate, about an, nearly an 8,000 square foot uh, complex. And um, that's really starting to take shape if you drive by. You know, they were able to close it out during winter months, the brutal winter months and keep working. I was in there the other day and it was a nice 65 degrees or so. And, uh, and really starting to take shape with drywall and, and studded out rooms and everything. They're pretty aggressive time frame still. Hopefully mid to late April is when we're, uh, it's handed over to us and then working on trying to do some things to open it up after that. So, uh, you know, just getting everything organized to open it up. So hopefully sometimes this, this spring, we'd like to see that open. And so I wanted to pass on something that was, uh, that was non-COVID as well. Uh, that's all I have today, Derek. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for that update this morning. Anyone else from the healthcare sector, uh, healthcare sector that has an update this morning? All right, hearing no other updates, we will move on to the uh, education portion uh, of our update. Um, Mitch uh, Bartholomew was uh, not av available to attend this morning, uh, so I will be uh, reading his update. Uh, it sounds like uh, YPS has very low numbers. There's no positive uh, staff or students, um, and, so, and it looks that there's only two students that are in quarantine currently. Um, YPS staff will begin receiving the vaccination next Friday, uh, March 12th, and then it appears they have several uh, spring events coming up, um, prom and other things like that, but um, they are doing everything they can with uh, safety precautions uh, at, at those events. Um, does anybody else from uh, education um, have, a, have an update? All right, here are no other updates. Um, we'll move on to the government sector and Barry. Um, I will let you take it away with your update. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, you know, just real happy to hear all the um, the good news on on the amount of cases, and and uh, the city's glad to be part of of having everyone out at the convention center and getting those shots. Um, you know, the mask mandate did run out, but but that doesn't mean that the Board of Health and the city doesn't encourage everyone, as Laura said, to keep up the effort and, and social distance and wear masks when you're around people and can't do that. And just keep going on this line because we've been uh, we've been very blessed around here um, compared to a lot of places in the country for what's happened with the, uh, you know, quality of life and being able to keep doing all the things that we want to do. So um, another great time to live in Nebraska. Um, just a couple of things on the city side real quick. Um, the auditorium is getting close to being finished. The fire marshal was doing a walkthrough. So hopefully we just have a few minor checklist things and some cleaning to do. We have a events scheduled there towards uh, about three weeks from today. So we're kind of on a deadline now to get that building cleaned up and, and ready to use. And we got it painted too. And so, you know, we'll have a open house sometime when we can and get everybody to have a chance to look at it because it, it really does look nice. The gym um, area with all the improvements and the lighting and, and everything looks good. We still will have work to do in other areas of the building because it was a, it was a pretty messy project by the time you put sprinklers in and drill holes in, in some of the concrete and all the work that was done there. So it'll take us a while to get it all kind of back into shape and then we can continue to make plans on how to use that building. Um, the community center is closed and, and uh, they've got the, the asbestos, they're working on that, but have gotten a lot of that out of what used to be the area where the museum was. Um, so hard to tell, but you know, it'll be summertime before we get that open, but hopefully we'll get the, the outdoor pool will open in its normal way. Um, Sheree told me that uh, we have a, 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 the first games are just in a couple of weeks out at the, at the par, uh, ballpark complex. So hopefully this will be a more normal year for activities and, and 
and uh, people to be able to use all the, the facilities that your cast to offer. So um, we have a council meeting tonight and not a lot on the agenda other than we're refinancing some bonds with these historic low rates. And we were able to save over a million dollars over the length of, of the time on the bonds that we had set up for the ball field. Um, we're looking at some other bonds tonight that will also save um, save the city and the taxpayer money. So we're taking advantage of everything we can there. So um, with that, everybody have a great day and uh, thank you. Thank you, Barry, for that update. Uh, anybody else from uh, government uh, sector with a, an update? I know the county has no report, uh, so we will move along to the nonprofits. Um, anybody from the nonprofit um, sector that would have anything to report? Um, let's see. Um, Jake, there we are. Hey there. Um, not a lot to report, just uh, putting out there that we are seeing a sharp decrease in the number of people requesting COVID relief funds. Um, we're choosing to interpret that as a good sign, but if anyone still needs them, please feel free to reach out. Uh, other than that, no real updates on our end. Thank you, Jake. Moving along to the business uh, sector. Anybody from the business sector have any um, any updates? I know the chamber is busy out at um, the vaccine clinic helping out there, so they don't have a report available. Um, I know, oh, Mike. Uh, just a real quick question. I apologize. I jumped on the call late, uh, but uh, you guys may have already covered that. But uh, how soon are we going to be able to see uh, vaccines available for uh, folks that are working? you know, here at Champion and other uh, companies around town. I can probably take that one, Derek. Yeah, go Laura. ahead, Laura. How you doing, Laura? Uh, hi, hi, Mike. Um, so our, we have, um, we're still getting our limited amount of vaccine um, that uh, each week that, so we are still working through that phase 1B. Uh, once we get to, and, and I think we'll be here for at least a few more weeks, um, getting the rest of uh, phase 1B done. And then, then our, uh, our estimate is we'll begin uh, into phase two. And I really think that um, at that point, we're going to be um, trying to get people with uh, age, 64 and people with those underlying health conditions and as we kind of work into that we will um, be opening up conversations as well uh, as to you know I, I think our goal is to get the most people vaccinated that we possibly can so we'll be working it um, in that phase at some point to get um, the rest of the population done and if it means coming to a, a manufacturing you know we'll we just give us a call and we'll see what we can do, okay? Okay, so we're still several. We got uh, uh, the old guys and the at-risk people to, to, to go and so on. So we're still, you mentioned several weeks. Is it safe to say a couple of months or so? We just, I, we just get questions from the folks here that the uh, plant on a regular basis. And uh, if, if we tell them that, that's, and if it's sooner than that, that's great. But you think it'll probably be another couple of months? You know, I think that if you have people that are uh, 50 and up, well, actually everybody at this point, um, you know, we're going to be, we're still gonna, going to have to adhere to some of those age groups and underlying health conditions as we move into phase two. So I would incur have your employees, if you would make that available to them to sign up on that vaccinate.ne.gov. That is a real key, that's our, our statewide uh, vaccine uh, sign up where we're gonna be working with the people who've signed up there and try to get them into our mass clinics first and before it comes to the general population. But I think, you know, we're, we're hoping that, I'm sure that, that in April, Mar uh, March and April, we'll be still working on some of those groups I, I hate to say when we'll be to the general population because I, I have my, 
I've kind of given up on being a, a predictor of, of how this <laughs> pandemic goes. <laughs> but um, you know, we're it kind of depends on what the what how many people are are in the queue to as okay. to when we get there. But you know, we definitely want to get, especially um, you know, anybody. We'll get to people sooner if they're in that vaccinate.any.gov. Very good. We'll go ahead and get that. We'll get that communicated to the folks here. And uh, we would like to be considered as you guys get closer and closer to that. Uh, we'd like to be able to consider the plant over here as a possible uh, vaccination site uh, because okay. most of the folks that work here uh, have indicated that they uh, they would participate in the in the vaccination process and. We'd like to organize it so they can bring their family members and spouses and things like that in at the same time. And uh, so if it's possible to set this up as a uh, as an off medical center vaccination site or something, and if it's possible to do it, let us know and we'll figure out what we need to do to set the uh, facility up to uh, do that and do that safely. So. Thank you, Mike. That's fantastic. We appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, like. Like I said, we're all about trying to get as many vaccines in people as we can. So we appreciate that and we will be in touch. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, hey, for what it's worth, you know, you said, I'm taking a look at the way this thing is plaguing the entire country and, uh, you know, what the numbers have done in the uh, four county area, uh, basically since uh, middle of October and what the numbers are looking like uh, statewide, people should feel real, real proud of the fact that, uh, uh, they've got leadership in the uh, in the community and the state of Nebraska that's uh, moving the ball forward because those numbers are very encouraging. So it makes my and job a lot easier, that's for sure. So I I agree with you. We have some great leaders in this community, and uh, it's been uh, very. Um, it has, we've all been working very hard together and it is really, um, you can, I'm as well very happy where the numbers are right now. And, and uh, now, you know, we're, our focus now is to try to vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. So um, great partnerships. And I thank everyone on this call, everyone here on this call, we know you're here because you care. And uh, we, we're very appreciative of that. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Hey, Derek. Yeah, go ahead, Stephen. I was watching on Facebook, but I thought it'd be easier to hop on Zoom real quick. Um, just wanted to give an update on the PPP loan changes. Um, they just announced, so yesterday I think was the official day with the new application for specifically for any business that is filed as their, like a sole proprietor that has a Schedule C. Um, historically, we were having to use net income, but they're now letting us use gross income for calculation going forward on any businesses filing with a Schedule C that have not filed yet. Um, we've been able to do that with farms this time around. So if you have a Schedule F for as a farmer or know anybody that has that, we've been able to use gross income um, to help with that. So those are um, some key changes. But the last guidance I've received is that you can't go back and change past applications if they've already been approved only going forward. So to reach out to your local banker, any any of the five banks here in the community have been more than helpful working on these PPP uh, projects. So just uh, reach out to your local banker and they'll be able to help you out. Thank you, Stephen, for that PPP related update. Barry, it appears there was a question in the chat for you. I didn't know if you were still on. Um, if you are still on, can you come back? Go ahead and pop on for a quick minute. It looks um, like yes, there was. I, I think the question was whether or not we'll be on the internet tonight. And the answer is the city council meeting will not be on the internet tonight. Um, we have a reasonably short agenda. And so it will be uh, in the council chambers and, and I'm sure media will be there. So. Thank you. All right. Um. I have a quick update with YCDC. We have our annual meeting coming up here in two weeks, uh, March 18th. Um, just confirmed the other day, we will have Lieutenant Governor Mike Foley uh, as our speaker there. Um, you will uh, speak at six, uh, but you're welcome to show up at 5.30 uh, for a little social um, before beforehand. Um, once again, that's March 18th. You can stop down at the 
your county development corporation offices you're at 601 north lincoln avenue pick up your tickets um, for that um, hearing no other updates i just want to uh, thank everyone for their updates and thank everyone for their time this morning um, you know, participating in this and helping keep our community informed and keep our community as safe as possible. Um, be sure to get out there and enjoy the weather this weekend over the next few days, uh, but stay safe and have a happy weekend. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great day.